Sunday before Thanksgiving, and uh, we are going to take a break from our study of Hebrews and uh, look rather at the subject of Thanksgiving, and uh, we are, are thankful that you're here to share together in that time. So let's pray. Father, as we've just sung uh, so many truths, Lord, we pray um, that you would make us your church that, like your Son, are kept by your love and, and readily proclaim not our will, but yours be done. And Lord, as a result, may our lives be lives that are Christ-like because of our hope, our faith, our trust in you. Uh, not ourself, not our circumstance, not even in others, but Lord, completely in you. For Father, as we come to you today, we come to you with this subject of thanksgiving on our hearts and in our prayer. And Father, I am convinced that for us to give thanks, to truly give thanks, to be those that are giving thanks, thankful people, we need a heart of gratitude, a heart that is captured by who you are and what you do So much so that out of our heart, out of a grateful heart, comes thanksgiving. And Father, that's not idealism. That is your will for us. And Father, I just confess that too often it has not been uh, the case in my life. And Father God, I pray that through the study of your word on, on Thanksgiving and in this season of the year when we turn our attention to it, that Lord, you would transform our hearts, uh, encourage our hearts, convict our hearts. Lord, whatever our need is, uh, Father, I thank you for those who are grateful and, and express it, live it. Talk it, sing it, share it, live like it. But Father, I pray uh, for those of us that struggle to, to be it, to live it. And Father God, I pray that you do a work in our hearts that would transform us to be your church that gratefully sings and lives for, for your glory and, and our thankful people. Guide us to that end. Do the work that you know we need, we pray. We ask it in Christ's name, amen. Thanksgiving, I think, is a very important subject um, for the believer's life. And so I think it's fitting, very fitting, that we take this day to focus on that. Uh, feast days and memorial days have always been important to God's people, right? Uh, they've always been important. Uh, they were days set aside to remind God's people of important aspects of life and of God and of His ministry. Uh, the annual feasts and sacrifices in Israel, the Lord's, the Lord's Supper in the New Testament church, are specifically, the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews 10.3, but in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sin every year. So in the Old Testament memorials, many of those were there to say, Sinner, 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 don't forget that we are sinners. But then many of those feasts were to remind us that there's a Savior, a Savior, a Savior, our only hope like the Passover, like the Lord's Supper. Uh, Paul, in writing in 1 Corinthians 11, said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And, and he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink this, do this 
in remembrance of me. And, and the, the, the sad fact is we need to be reminded. Do you believe that? Uh, Pam Bowen and I were just talking before the service about our memories. <laughs> Sometimes we forget things. Um, and I'm praying I don't forget the vote on Brian at the end of the service today because that's really going to look terrible. Uh, but uh, we need to be reminded. And God thought so. Because I, I won't ask you to turn to it, but if you did look at 2 Peter 1, 12 to 15, you see that in four short verses, three times, Peter says, I want to remind you, I want to remind you, I want to remind you. Here's what he says. He says, for this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Now think about that. I will not be negligent to remind you of these things, even though you know them and are established in them. Well, Peter, you're wasting your time. No, he's not. He, he says, I will not be negligent to remind you. And then he goes on in the next verse, says, yes, I think it right. It is right. As long as I am in this tent to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that shortly I must put off my tent just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful to ensure that you always have a reminder of these things after my decease. We need to be reminded. We need to be reminded. And one of the areas that I think perhaps some of us may need to be reminded is this area of thanksgiving. Anybody else think that? Is this area of thanksgiving. Now, I say that because I think, well, why? We shouldn't need to be reminded of this. This should be something that is just welling up and pouring over. And at times it is. But at times it isn't. And, and, and so it's fitting that we be reminded. Why? Because we as believers are to be thankful people when? When? Always. For all things. You know, I've heard it said. I've, I'm sure I've said it. Well, it says in all things, not for all things. Um, just a minute. Ephesians 1 says for all things. So we are to give thanks always, in all things, and for all things as Christians. And, and, and again, Paul said in Ephesians 5, he said, therefore, do not be, this is, this is incredible, Ephesians 5, 17, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ submitting to one another. And then in 1 Thessalonians 5, Paul said this, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus for you. So notice something about both those passages. Both those passages are, are I think, I, I'm not sure, but those are the only two passages in the New Testament that specifically say this is God's will. Now, many other things the New Testament says are God's will, amen? But in these two passages, the inspired scriptures say this is the will of God, and guess what's in the context? Give thanks. Always for all things. So, understand, this is, this is huge. I, I mean, this is huge. Uh, a lot of times we say, man, I'm, I'm looking for God's will. I'm looking for God's will. Folks, we don't have to look any further. This is one thing that is absolutely God's will. That you and I give thanks always in all things for all things. 
So, the Thanksgiving holiday, I think, uh, unlike many of the other goofy holidays that we have, like the one we just passed over, you know, with the goblins and stupid stuff, this is one that I think, man, we need this. We, we could benefit from this. Um, it, it affords an opportunity for us as believers to be reminded of a very important aspect of uh, our, our life. Um, and and I, I read into the history of Thanksgiving and it was interesting to me. Uh, it's been 400 years since the, the colonists and the Wampanoag Indians had their feast. And I know it's debated as to whether that was the first one and all that kind of neat stuff. But it's interesting to read the historians that were present of that time and to note that they did so so that we might have a special manner so that we might have after a special manner rejoice together after we had gathered the fruits of our labors and although it be not always so plentiful there's stories about William Bradford sending four or five guys out fowling shooting birds and they brought back so much fowl that they, the, the historian said it would have fed the whole group for a week. And that must have been some hunt, right? It also says the Wampanoag Indians went out and shot five deer and brought them and presented them to Bradford. So we all need to have fowl and venison for Thanksgiving. Okay? Just kidding. But here's what it says. They said, although it be not always so plentiful as it was at this time for us, yet by the goodness of God, we are so far from want. That was the thought on that first Thanksgiving. But it's not always this plentiful. There, there's times that there aren't so many fowl and aren't so many deer and we don't have the natives to go get them for us because we can't get them. Yet by the goodness of God, we are so far from one. And then he said this, that we often wish you partakers of our plenty. In other words, the colonists were writing history for the people back in England saying, we wish you were here to share in the goodness of God. And there's other history, and, and it's interesting to me. It was interesting to me to note that during the Revolutionary War, the Continental Congress established one or two days of Thanksgiving every year during that Revolutionary War. Uh, but it wasn't until 1863 that Abraham Lincoln finally proclaimed a national day as we've come to know it. Um, but more important than all that, is what scripture says about thanksgiving. And, and, and why is that important? That's important because I don't know about you, but this Thursday, I don't want to just go through the motions of turkey and trimmings, which is what often happens with, but I want to be thankful as I ought to be thankful. And I want us to be thankful as we ought to be thankful. And there's much that's said about it in scripture. Um, and given its importance, we want to take our time this morning to consider it. Why? Because I want to encourage and equip us to first be thankful and then to give thanks. To be thankful and to give thanks. I, I shared with you last week, I think, the, the quote that just struck me uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, where one pastor wrote, I have had a lifetime of telling and retelling everyone around me of the goodness, kindness, mercy, and grace of God. And that struck me because I thought, am I about telling everybody around me about the goodness, the kindness, the mercy, and the grace of God? I should be. And I can be, but I need to be a grateful person. And, and so I, I think that's important. I was also, 
I, I balanced that this week in my Bible study because I ran across Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 6.10, which says, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. Because there are very difficult, sorrowful times. Amen? And yet in the midst of those sorrowful times, there can be the rejoicing and the thanksgiving. So to do that, I want to ask and answer three quick questions. No, well, I shouldn't have said quick. Three questions. Number one, what is thanksgiving? And I'm not talking about the holiday. What does it mean to be to give thanks. What is thanksgiving? Secondly, why should we be thankful? And then thirdly, what will it look like? Okay, those are the three things that we want to look at. Number one, what is thanksgiving? Well, first of all, thanksgiving, when we're talking about thanksgiving in a biblical sense, uh, we're talking about a celebration of gratitude that takes place within the heart that is expressed in various ways and means. Thanksgiving is a celebration of gratitude within that is expressed without. It's, it's expressed in gratefulness. It, it's the thankful giving thanks. In other words, it's not the thankful that don't express it. Nor is it the ungrateful that, it, that try to express thanks. They both have to be true. Hey, I'm reminded of Jesus' words to the woman at the well in John 11. He said, the days are coming when those who worship must worship him, how? In spirit and in truth. In other words, God's truth must impact my spirit... And out of it comes worship. In other words, if my spirit is not impacted by the truth of God, whatever I'm doing, singing, saying, it's not worship. Because true worship must be in spirit and in truth. And it's the same with thanksgiving. My heart must be impacted to be grateful so that out of my life comes true thanksgiving. That's thanksgiving. It's a grateful heart expressing gratitude in giving of thanks. It's, it's lips speaking what my heart knows. It's, it's my body responding to what is true of my soul. That's thanksgiving. And again, I think that's important because I, you know, I've had people say, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a thankful person. But you don't get that in the things that they say and do. You know, I've, I've had people in, in churches over the years say, I just don't sing. I just, I just don't. You know what? If your heart is welling up with gratitude, it will be expressed. It will be expressed. But on the other hand, it doesn't do any good for me to express things that I don't really mean. So when we're talking about giving thanks, we're not talking about trying to drum something up that I can say. It's talking about our hearts being grateful, and as a result, it, it's expressed. And I would submit to you that in this idea of what is thanksgiving, it is an expression of gratitude for who God is and what he does. It is an ex it's a heart that is grateful because of who God is and what he does that then expresses thanksgiving because of who God is and because of what he does. Uh, of the 40 times that the phrase give thanks appears in, in the scripture, the New Testament, or no, the scripture, not the Old New Testament, Old Testament also. One phrase appears ten times, and it's almost word perfect, I think in eight or nine of them. Okay, no, it isn't word perfect. But it says this, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for He is good, His mercy endures forever. Ten times that appears out of the forty times. Oh, oh, give thanks to the Lord. Why? 
because he is good and his mercy endures forever. In other words, give thanks to God. Why? Because he is good. He's good. Just that thought alone would transform my thankfulness. If I really knew and understood and believed and lived in light of the fact that God is always, God is always good. The idea of good there is a term, and, and I think I'm getting ahead of myself in my notes, but it's the idea of, of, of his, his goodness, his character is always right. Always. It's always good. It's never bad. The, the word carries the idea of beautiful. The word carries the idea of gladness. The word carries the idea of, of peace. Because God is good. And if I just would, would come to know and understand and trust and rest in the goodness of God, I will be a thankful person. But not only because he's good, but also because his mercy endures forever. What's that about? He hasn't put me in hell yet. Because that's what I deserve. Right? And you know, too often when my thankfulness disappears, it's when I feel like I'm getting a bum deal from God. I've forgotten that his mercy endures forever. I've forgotten that my, my life, my existence, my eternity, my job, my house, my car, my food is a gift of what class? God's mercy. It is God's gracious gift. Again, you know, we, we talk about the Lord's Prayer and give us this day our daily bread. And so many of us with freezers full, and we've got to use up the venison and make jerky because season's next week. And is there because God put it there. And I don't deserve it. Again, if I would just wrap my head around, my heart around the fact that God is good and that he is merciful to me, I will be a grateful, thankful person. And so when we're talking about thankfulness, we're talking about this idea um, of, of a, being a grateful person who expresses that gratitude because of who God is, because of what he's done. So if we were to define or describe Thanksgiving, as it's derived from various words that are used in Scripture, it, it speaks of thanks and thankfulness that comes from a gratitude, a gratefulness, especially for who God is and what He does, and it is expressed all over in my life in various ways and means for many different things. It, 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 it is seen in various expressions of joy that come from acknowledging fully and celebrating. The, the lexical definition of some of these words talks about a celebration. Celebrating who God is and what he does. And, and I would just submit to you that when thankfulness is missing in my life, it's because there's no celebration happening here. Because I've got my eyes off of him, right? You know, I, I hope it doesn't bother. I don't think it would. I should have asked Jeffrey and Shion, but, I, you know, I remember when Kago was born and died. That was hard. That was hard. But I remember a peace because I thought, Lord, you're in control. You're, you're still good. You're, you're, you're sovereign. Now, I wish I could tell you that's true of everything that's gone haywire in my life. I can't. 
but I know it can. But why? Why, why is it? it? It's because of who God is and what He does that changes my heart and as a result is expressed. So we are talking about actual expression. Giving thanks, i got to be given something. If, if I'm not given, I'm not given thanks. Um, and so it's an actual expression, giving thanks that comes from a thankful, grateful, celebratory heart. Look at Psalm 30, verse 12. This is, this is one of the uh, just incredible passages on this subject. Um, Psalm 30 and verse 12. Uh, here David is, is speaking, and, and I wish I, I don't want to take time to read the whole psalm, but if you back up to verse 1, I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cry out to you and you healed me, etc. Et I, I sing praise to the Lord, verse 4. Uh, for his anger is but for a moment. There's the mercy. His favor for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Again, the thankfulness of God in a Christian is not saying there's never sorrow. There is. But in the midst of it, there's the thankful, grateful heart that rests in God. But look at the last verse, verse 12. To the end. To what end, David? That my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O oh, Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Do you see what he says in conjunction with thanksgiving? He says, to this end, all this is true, to this end, that my glory may sing. What's he talking about? He's talking about my heart glorying in you. Folks, that's what we need. We need hearts that glory in God. And if we have hearts that glory in God, we will sing. We will sing praise to you and not be silent. Again, this isn't, this isn't one of the proverbial testimonial times where some of us sit around and think, okay, now what could I say? I know none of you have ever done that. But now what, what, what could I say? No, this is a, I can't be silent because there's glory welling up within me because of who God is and what he does that I, I got to sing, I got to speak. And as a result, oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. You see, we can, we can count on doing that forever because God never changes. Forever. So that's what we're talking about when we, when we talk about giving thanks. Simply put, it's thanksgiving is the various expressions of a grateful heart. And again, it's to be true of us as believers for all things, in all things, always. It's to be our testimony. Uh, it's to be the, the, the natural welling up of spirit and truth in our life. Now, question, why? Why should that be? Uh, again, I, I just continue this study with me in, in asking ourselves, why should this be? And, and I have, I, I guess I have three things here, but the third one is kind of broad. The first one is because it's good to do so. Because it's good. Look at Psalm 92. Look at Psalm 92 and verse 1. Why should we give thanks? Because it's good to give thanks to the Lord. Psalm 92. Um, psalm 92 is a psalm. Uh, it's a psalm of praise to the Lord for His love and faithfulness. Uh, and, and the title given it is a psalm, a song for the Sabbath day. And, and I stopped and I thought, why would this be a psalm for the Sabbath day? Well, the Sabbath day was the day they would sit and rest in God's finished work. Sit and rest in God's finished work. 
And when you do that, verse 1, it is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of ten strings, on the lute and on the harp, with harmonious sound, for you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. Notice that, that he says in verse 1, it is good to give thanks to the Lord. The word good there is that term beautiful. It, 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 it is the idea of best. It has the idea, it's translated cheerful. It's translated glad. It's translated joyful. And I'm convinced that many of the times in my life where I'm not glad and I'm not joyful and I'm not happy is because I'm not grateful and giving thanks to God. For, for any of the unnumbered reasons why I'm not glad and, and rejoicing. So, so do we want to do something good and right? Give thanks. It's good. It, it, it's beautiful. It, do you want to do something beautiful? Do you want to do something that will make you and others glad? Truly. Give thanks. To God. Now, the other side of that is this. If I do not give thanks, it's bad. It's bad. If it's good to give thanks, it's bad not to. It's wrong. It's discouraging. It's, it's not glad. It's not beautiful. It's ugly. It's harmful. And, and we need to give thanks. Why? Because it's good. It's right. Now again, Jeff, are you saying that we should never be sorrowful? No. Because there's many sorrowful things. But in the midst of those sorrowful things, do my eyes rest in Christ, in God, and who He is and what He does, and my heart well up with rejoicing? As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. You know, it's like the psalmist. Read the Psalms. David starts out and he's, oh, Lord, this is going wrong and this is going wrong and these are happening. These. But by the end of the psalm, I think in every psalm but one, there's one psalm where it, it seems like David never gets around to the, the, the other side of it. I'm sure he did. But, oh God, I can rest and rejoice in you. It's good. And it's bad not to. It's distorted. It's sinful not to give thanks or to be thankful. It's perverted. It's not in keeping with who God is. It's not in keeping with the truth of the matter. And again, when we read some of this, I think some of us or some people would look at us and say, well, that's, that's just idealistic stuff. No, that's biblical truth. That's biblical. So if it's not happening in my life, what I need to do is say, okay, why isn't this happening? And Lord, help me. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Amen? Because it's good to give thanks. Number two, it's God's will. And, and we already talked about this in 1 Thessalonians 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And in Ephesians 5, 17, Paul says, Therefore, do not be unwise, but under, understand what the will of the Lord is. Verse 20, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another. God's will for you, for me, if we're believers is to give thanks always in all things for all things. That's God's will. God's choice. God's determined choice and will 
for you and I. Now again, if that's true, then to not give thanks is what? To not be a thankful person who's giving thanks means what? I am not in God's will. I'm going against God's will. Uh, in that moment, I am not walking in obedience to the Lord. Why? Because it's good and it's God's will. And it's interesting to me, and, and if we have time, we'll get back to this. I don't know that we will, so let me just interject it. That, that Ephesians 5, 20 and 21 says this, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Whether or not we are grateful people giving thanks has a huge impact on whether we minister to each other the way we should. Because if I'm not a grateful person because of God, His goodness, and His mercy to me, I won't be merciful to you. Do you see how important this is? This is God's will. It's good. It's God's will. Secondly, at that point, I don't know about you, but I think, but Lord, how? 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 Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. I believe it's good, and I believe it's your will, but Lord, how? Look at the third thing. Look at Psalm 107 with me, please. Psalm 107. The third thing I want you to think about is, is this. We should give thanks to God because of who God is and what He does. Now, I know we've already said that. But look at it in Psalm 107. Because of who God is and because of what He does. Uh, Psalm 107, verse 1. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. There's one of those verses. That's, that phrase is repeated ten times. But jump down to verse 8. Oh, that man, men would give thanks to the Lord for His goodness and for His what? His wonderful works. Okay? Verse 15. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 21, oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Verse 31, oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works. What's David saying? He's saying, oh, that we would give thanks. Why? Because of God's goodness, who he is. And again, that's that same term we looked at earlier. God is beautiful. God is, is that which would bring gladness and rest and joyfulness and cheerfulness. He's good in his character. He, he is the one that James said is the father of lights from whom cometh every good and perfect gift with no variation, neither shadow of turning. God will never change. He's good. Everything he does is good. And your life and mine, oh, that I would remember that. That I would just so rest in that. Because of who he is. But secondly, because of his wonderful works to the children of men. Do you see that phrase? Repeated four times in the psalm, the wonderful works of God. The word wonderful is the idea of great. It's his works are distinguished from all others. They're greater than all others. They're wonderful. They're marvelous. They're miraculous. You ever sit and look back on your life as a believer and look what God did? And sit back and think, man. You know, that would help my thankfulness. If I would take time to stop and remember back to what God did. You know, Matt and Bob, the, the bathroom that appeared. The, the people that helped us in our trip. The, the, the incredible things that God's done. And, and I'm not... 
Too often I get wrapped up in the here and the now and I forget the wonderful works of God. And not only that, but then to stop and think that because of his character, because of his goodness, his works are always right. My problem is, is I get into the midst of something that God brings and God allows and I think, God, what are you doing? This can't be right. And our God, Lord of heaven and earth, God of angels' armies, is saying, Jeff, just trust me. I'm working a wonderful work. To the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 55 says, His ways are not my ways. His ways are higher than my ways. Hey, take the time this afternoon, read Psalm 55. You know, I think most of us would say, yeah, I, I, I know that's true. But do I live like it? To be okay with the fact, and that's, an under, that's such an understatement. To be absolutely enthralled with the truth that his ways are so much higher and better than mine, why would I even begin to think that I have a better idea? But yet I do. And my joy goes. And my thankfulness goes. Why? Because I have my heart set on my will, not his will, like we just sang. And so we need to give thanks. Why? Because it's good, because it's God's will, and because of who God is and what he does. Now, there's several other thoughts on that that I want to share with you. Okay? Not only because of his goodness and his wonderful works, but look at Psalm 30, verse 4. Here's another aspect of that. Psalm 30 and verse 4. Oh, sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. Do you know why I ought to give thanks? Because of who he is and what he's done. You know what's true of him? His name is holy. What's that mean? What's that mean? God in his absolute character is spotless. Exalted. To be feared. To be reverenced. To be stood in awe of. Why? Because his, his name, his character is holiness. Perfectly set apart. Would that help me the next time that God brings something into my life and I'm debating, should I trust him? Should I not? He's holy. Perfectly holy. Nothing can taint him in who he is and what he does in your life and mine. And so I am convinced. I don't like it. I will tell you, I don't like it. But I am convinced that what God allows and brings into my life, I absolutely need. Now, Lord, help me understand. And God, help me just fall on my knees before you and worship and adoration and submission and obedience and now, did I just say I do that all the time? You all need to get it together? No. But I'm learning that. And I know this, your gratefulness, your thankfulness, your joy, your peace will increase to the extent that we rest in God whose name is holy. But there's another one. There's another one. Um, uh, look with me. Oh. Look with me at Psalm 119.62. Psalm 119.62. Hey, and this whole thing of, of giving thanks because of who God is and what he does. We also need to recognize that his judgments 
are always right. His judgments are always right. Psalm 119.62 says this. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks to you because your righteous, because of what? Your righteous judgments. The psalmist says, you know, when I wake up in the middle of the night, You ever done that? And, and again, if you've done that, maybe you've struggled to sit and worry or sit and think about all the what ifs and the negatives and the. But the psalmist says, what? At midnight, I will rise to give thanks to you. Why? Look at the second part of that verse. Why? Because of your righteous judgments. What did the psalmist believe? Every choice God makes, every decision God makes, is right. Is right. Because of your righteous judgments. And again, if, if I believe that, that, that God is good, that his works are wondrous, that, that he is holy, and that his judgments are always right, what, what's going to happen in here? Those ravens. You know, we, we talk about ravens, not butterflies, because in Minnesota there was big, ugly black birds that sometimes in my life I feel like there's a flock of ravens fluttering. But those, those anxious hearts dissipate. And the joyful celebration of God, my Savior, takes over. And I'm thankful. And I'm grateful. And I give thanks. Why? Because God, you chose this. And this is what I need right now. And I rest in him. Now, if such is our God, full of goodness, full of holiness, full of mercy, who's always right, what should we do in and for all things but give thanks? Amen? But add to that one more thing. Add to that this. We ought to give thanks to God because that God saved me. That God is my strong, high tower of salvation. Look at uh, uh, 2 Samuel 22. By the way, this is the first time that give thanks appears in our, in our Bible, at least in the New King James. 2, Thessalon or 2 Samuel 22. 2 Samuel 22, and, and start with me at verse 47. 2 Samuel twenty two forty seven. Why should we give thanks? We ought to give thanks because God is our strong, high tower of salvation. Um, and again, just put this in the context of the Old Testament. A strong, high tower is the idea of a, a, a fortress, a rock we just sang, right? We just, one of the songs you just sang talked about the Lord our rock. Right? 2 Samuel twenty-two forty-seven 47 says, The Lord lives. Blessed be my rock. Let God be exalted, the rock of my salvation. It is God who, now watch this, He avenges me. He subdues the people under me. He delivers me from my enemies. You also lift me up. Above those who rise against me, you have delivered me from the violent man. Therefore, I will what? 
give thanks to you, O Lord, among the Gentiles, and sing praise to your name. He is the tower of salvation to his king and shows mercy to his anointed, to David and his descendants forevermore. Again, why should I give thanks to God? Because he lives. And he's my rock, David says. He's my rock. Let him be exalted. He is the rock of my salvation. He avenges me. I don't have to. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. If I can just rest in that. Oh, the gladness and the peace. Right? He, he subdues the people. Under, everybody around me that I look at, and David talked about this how many times. Lord, why do, they, why do the, 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 the evil get ahead? And the Lord who is holy, whose judgment is always right, is saying, David, just trust me. I'm working it out. Just trust me. He subdues the people under me. He delivers me from my enemies. And you also lift me up above those who rise against me. My friend, if you are a blood-bought, born-again believer today, God has lifted you up. To be a child of God in his kingdom that is forever. <sighs> is there anything better? Not if I seek first the kingdom of God, but if I'm seeking first my kingdom or I'm seeking first something else, then the gratefulness goes, the peace goes, the joy goes, the rest goes. But oh, to know that he is my strong high tower that delivers me from my enemies, that lifts me up. Therefore, therefore, I will give thanks to you, O Lord. David says, you know why I'll give thanks? Because you've lifted me up. And you save me. You deliver me. You watch over me. So much so that David walked into the cave on two occasions when he could have taken Saul's life. And he said, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. Think of the rest, the joy, the peace. Folks, that's what we want and need. That's why what I want for us as a church. Why? Well, there's another thing I want you to look at here, and that's this. Look at 1 Chronicles 16. Look at 1 Chronicles 16, please. We're almost done. I'm going to have to save the third one for tonight. 1 Chronicles 16. Uh, look at verse 34. Not only should we give thanks to God because he is our strong high tower of salvation, but we should give thanks to God because that's why he saved you and I. That's why he saved you. You say, why? What do you mean, Jeff? To give thanks to him. That's why he saved us. Look at 1 Chronicles 16. Verse 34. 1 Chronicles 16, 34. I, I, I studied this passage, and last night as I went to bed, I searched for a sermon on Thanksgiving to listen to, and, and this was the text that the preacher went to. It was, it was already in our study, but it was fascinating that he pointed to it. It says in, in 1 Chronicles 16, 34, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever, and say... Say what? Save us, O God of our salvation. Gather us together and deliver us from the Gentiles. Why? 
Why should he save us? Why, why should he gather us together? Why should he deliver us from the Gentiles? What's it say? To give thanks to your holy name. To triumph in your praise. Do we realize that one of the reasons God saves a wretch like me and you is so that we will give thanks to him among the people. Among the people. He, he saves us for this very purpose, to give thanks to his holy name, to triumph in his praise. The, <coughs> the same thing is restated in Psalm 106, 47, where it says, Save us, O Lord God, and gather us from among the Gentiles to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. In other words, God wants to raise up sinners like you and I who are triumphing in His praise because He is such a good and merciful God who has saved us. And my friend, if, if God does that work in your life and mine, we will give thanks. Amen? You, you, you can't help but. This is an idealism. And, and, and we don't have time to look at what that'll look like. Tonight, I, I'm going to look at that here. But I, I want you to see one more verse in closing. Look at Psalm 140, verse 13. <coughs> Psalm 140 and verse 13. Again, a psalm of David, and he says this in verse 13. Surely the righteous shall, what? Give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. Surely the righteous will, what? Give thanks to his name. Dwelling in his presence. My friend, there is nothing more Christian truly than giving thanks. Those of us who are right, who are righteous, who are doing what we should do, who are dwelling in the presence of God, will give thanks out of hearts of gratitude. Amen? Father, help us, I pray. Uh, Lord, help us to recognize and understand that the only right, truly right and good thing for us is to be people of gratitude that give thanks to you. And Father, help us if, if where we struggle. Uh, Lord, I, I, I don't know if there's anybody in here that never struggles with it, but I, I know I do. And Lord, I would imagine that there are many of us that do. But Lord, where and when we struggle, help us to see that, that there's something that needs to change in our heart and life. That, that we need to understand who you are and what you do. We need to remember your great mercy to us. We need to recognize your character of holiness and righteousness and, and unchanging. King of kings, Lord of lords. Lord of heaven and earth. And God, Lord, I thank you that we are growing in that knowledge. And Lord, I pray that when the enemy would discourage some of us by saying, man, you just, you just miss it so badly. There's no hope. That, Lord, we would recognize and understand that we need to just run to that high tower and understand that you will lift us up to know you more, to love you more, to serve you more. But, oh God, whatever our need, our heart's need, 
I pray that today we would see that it's only right that we be a people that are so grateful to you for who you are and what you do and what you've done that it is expressed in every area of our life in gratitude and thankfulness. And Lord, I just pray that you would do that work in our hearts for your honor and your glory, we ask it. In Jesus' name, amen.